So this is my video about Catherine Crick. Uh, I know there's a lot of other videos that are like Catherine Crick exposed. Um, there's some great information out there. I'm grateful to the work that these men and women are doing, exposing, uh, exposing what's going on with Catherine Crick. Um, but this is my story as someone that went to her church uh, for a good period of time. So early 2022, maybe end of 2021, I come across something on Instagram talking about revival in the park. And everything about that sounded good to me. I'm like, revival, yes, in the park, different. Yes, I like that, we're outside. So January, I go to, they were meeting in a park near Griffith Park in LA, um, Los Angeles, uh, right outside the Gene Autry. I think Gene Autry Museum was the first meeting I went to. And I wasn't going as a skeptic. I, didn't, I hadn't seen any exposed videos. I hadn't seen her defending herself a lot. I had just seen that there's a bunch of people meeting out in a park that are talking about Jesus and worshiping him. And that appealed to me. So I, I go for that, that and that alone. And so I worship with the people and I'm hanging out. And then they do prayer at the end for quite a while. And I mean, just Catherine's praying for people. Uh, and anyway, I, I'm, I'm there for that service and I'm like, okay, cool. I'll come back next week. I leave before it's totally over. And the next week I see online that on Instagram, okay, they're meeting, they're switching parks. They're going to a new, new location. Cool. They're a mobile church. Okay. Let's go to the new location. So I go to Elysian Park in LA, which is near Dodger Stadium. It's just a park that's around the stadium. So I go to Elysian Park and, you know, six total times from January to February, I go to her meetings. The last one I had went to was February 22nd, 2022. Took a huge break and then went back in 2023 for a little while. And no, started just noticing strange things in the next few meetings. I noticed that after the service, she would be escorted, people surround, like her team surrounding her, away from the people, like she's some celebrity or something, just completely surrounding her, escorting her away. And I was just like, hmm, Jesus, a man of the people, real preachers available to the people. We're a small group of people, maybe a couple hundred max, 150, I don't know, maybe a hundred, to be honest. And I'm just like, this is weird. I'm I, when I noticed that I noticed that she would leave that way a few times, and I'm like, I don't like that. That seems, it just bothered me right away. I'm like, it's this isn't cool. This seems like, who does she think she is, and what's why all the protection against anybody having access to her? Well, that started to develop over time of why. So I'm just noticing these things, and then in her meetings. Uh, she was talking about sowing for deliverance, of sow extra seed if you need deliverance. And I'm thinking of the verses that Jesus said of freely you've given, freely receive. And Simon the sorcerer, who's, who's like, how much do I have to pay to be able to impart the Holy Spirit to people? And the apostle told him, I think it was Peter or Paul, I want to say Peter told him, may your money perish with you for thinking you could purchase the gift of God. And just all throughout the New Testament, it's very clear the gifts of God are free. Jesus came to give us freedom and deliverance. You don't got to pay for it. You can't pay for it. It's not the way to get it. It's free. So her being like you, she would have these, I started, well, let me slow down a little bit. So I'm six services in, and then February 22nd, 2022, um, she, that's a, a number that just sticks out to me. So that date really, you know, stuck in my memory. Um, but she was that day spent half of her sermon talking about don't watch these exposed videos about me uh, people are jealous they're trying to distract from the ministry and the work of god and don't go watch them so i'm like okay that's my cue to go watch them like what's this girl not want me to see you know i'm pretty sure the holy spirit can like direct me and guide me if if i'm just watching someone be jealous so i start watching the videos and notice a guy named Abednego Lufiel talk about some things that were really clear to me. And I just could not go back there for the rest of 2022. I'm like, no. 
Okay, during that the time of the break, Troy Black puts out a video, which is a guy online, loves Jesus. Um, but I watched his video, and it's, it's titled something like, What God Showed Me About Catherine Crick. This is a guy that I respect as a fellow believer and believe, you know, he's on a journey with God. He's growing with the Lord. And the basic gist I got from his video was him saying um, that he believes that she's legit and is there may needs to be some maturing happening. And so I kind of took that in and I'm like, okay, she may need to read the word more. She, But I, I can appreciate boldness. I can appreciate someone that puts themselves out there and just goes for it and is like, okay, let's go to a park. And so I ignored a lot of things and started watching her videos again, just giving her a huge pass of being like, she may just need to be maturing still. Pretty much every church I've ever been to, people in leadership, I've been on leadership at churches, very close with people in, in a specifically a mega church in my home, hometown, uh, Rockford, Illinois, and notice people in church have problems. Maturing is something that usually needs to happen. Uh, there's So I could give people grace to be like, maybe they don't know everything about every topic, but I'm not going to throw out the baby with the bathwater. So... I just, throughout 2022, start to give her grace again. I'm moving on with my life. I've got other stuff to do. I need, I'm like moving and switching jobs and just let go of like watching a ton of exposed videos. I got really into it and was like, whoa, this is what's going on here. I feel like I need to give this some attention to taking a huge break. Time goes by. Actually, before I get to how I went back there again in 2023, um, just at the park, I would notice stuff like these six meetings these same two girls kept screaming out during every deliverance prayer time, which that's a huge part of her uh, format is worship, a uh, message, and then I like half the time was spent on praying and deliverance, casting out demons, supposedly um, casting out demons. I want to say that supposedly, you know, when I say church, I want to say church because there's some stuff that's just not right. And um, some stuff that she has not corrected in her ministry. And like when I gave her the grace, you know, from watching Troy's video, which I don't know that he really heard from God. I don't know. You know, he didn't go. I respect Troy Black, but after going to her church, I'm thinking back to his video thinking there's some stuff he doesn't know. There's some stuff he didn't see. And um, I that could be affecting his opinion. So I'm just noticing these same two girls always screaming out during deliverance. And it's like, well, why aren't they getting delivered? Or why are they getting delivered every single week? Like, did the demons not listen? Is the authority of Christ not here? What's happening? So, and then I would notice that she would pray for people with physical ailments and they wouldn't get healed. And then she would say, go, it's going to happen as you go. And there's a very seductive, deceptive way of making people accept what I believe are, are false signs and wonders. Um, people were testifying, but I, can't, I cannot say that I legitimately saw somebody get healed there. And I want to. I wanted to. I wanted to be wrong. I'm like, I want to worship with these people out in the park. God, don't take this away from me. But when I'm watching this girl treat herself like a celebrity and not have any closeness to people except for the times that she could control. Uh, I had to listen to God and be like, it doesn't matter how much I like worshiping in a park. If God's like, I'm not here, I got to go. You know, I don't want to be where he's not. So uh, time goes by and the rest of 2022, I don't go there. I'm going to a church in Pasadena and um, just dealing with other stuff. And then beginning of 2023, she comes across my Instagram again and I'm checking it out and I'm like, oh, they just moved into a church building and I'm thinking about Troy's video and thinking maybe she matured and maybe some of this wacky sowing seed stuff. Maybe she watched the exposed videos and realized that she's in extreme error and contrary to the word of God, to the words of Jesus himself, freely you've received, 
freely give. That's what he told the disciples. Freely you've received, freely give it away. And nothing wrong with taking offering for a ministry, right? That's a whole nother video because I got some thoughts on that. Nothing wrong with being taking donations, being like, hey, we, we want to support the work. We want to be able to grow and do other stuff and, you know, support the work of God. I'm all down for that. Like, I believe in generosity. I believe in supporting the work of God financially according to one's ability and not under compulsion, just like scripture says, like Paul says in Corinthians, do it out of a generous heart. God loves a cheerful giver. If you can't be cheerful about it, keep your money, you know? And, um, but she was saying you need to sow for deliverance. And sometimes the deliverance doesn't happen if you've sowed into witchcraft and you need to sow into the ministry. And I just saw how this is sick. There's something very sick here. Well, anyway, time goes by. Beginning of 2023, I'm like, you know what? Maybe she's learned. Maybe she's um, watched the error of her ways. And so I gave it a chance. I'm like, they're in a church building. I'm going to go check out this church. So I go to, now they're meeting in a building um, called 5F Church, uh, meeting in the warehouse district in downtown Los Angeles. So I think we were at 300 South Mission Street. So January, February, March, April, May, June, July, I'm going to this church. And I mean, half of last year. And um, there's stuff that the whole time I'm like, ah, it's not perfect. Like I noticed after every service, she would slip away and not be available for the crowd. And I'm just like, what is this? This is, something's wrong with this. She did that every single service. She would slip away upstairs and, you know, just come out like a celebrity, but not be there for the people unless the cameras were on, they were on the stage and the microphone was on. So it's like, well, what's the heart of this person? That's actually, I mean, I just started to be like, oh, what's going on here? Um, and then I saw her preaching from that church, the sowing seed for deliverance. I saw her tell a woman that uh, the woman looked poor, to be honest. She looked like she was struggling, her clothes, her appearance, her hair, uh, it looked like this woman was pretty close, deep in poverty. And Catherine's telling her, she says something along, not verbatim, but to get the gist. Um, she leans over the stage to this woman. He's like, God's showing me that you've sowed a lot into the world and you need to sow a seed for, fi for deliverance, for full freedom. Well, that does not match anything in the Bible. And that just stung me. And I'm like, oh, this girl's sick. This, that's when my eyes fully opened and I'm like, yeah, they're singing about Jesus, but it, I just started to open my eyes. I mean, I got baptized by Catherine in May at a place called Mother's Beach, which wonder why she chose that looking back. Um, but I was just, I was not seeing, I just wanted to be with people that love Jesus. And I started making friends in the church and liking those people and who were just people trying to go to God. You know, they were just trying to go to a good church. Anyway, She's preaching this, this garbage, this garbage from hell, these demonic doctrines about so for deliverance. These are thoughts that keep people away from Jesus. I mean, you, it confuses people about the freedom in Christ and how to be delivered for real, which is free. You can be delivered just by reading the word, just by getting God in you through his word. But she, you know, then she brings out a book, The Secret of the Anointing and The Keys of the Kingdom. And I just start noticing how her sermons are all about her special anointing. Uh, be humble, be humble, be humble. Yes, be humble. But I believe she was using be humble to, to as a thought stopping device to tell people, don't question me. Don't look into what I'm doing. Uh, just accept whatever I'm saying. And it's like, well, as I'm reading the Bible, I can see all over the New Testament, specifically Paul, the great apostle, the humble apostle, you know, that <laughs> is saying, I take no honor to myself. Test, there's going to be wolves. Test them. Test them with the word. Be diligent. Study the word and show yourself approved. Make sure it lines up with the word of God. Many wolves are going to come in the end times. Many wolves coming for sordid gain have already come to you now preaching a false Christ. And so I just noticed all this scripture twisting, uh, thought stopping devices. And, you know, so end of July really first Sunday in August of 2023, I feel very clearly I need to not go to this church for a while. I need to take a step back, think about some things, 
So I don't go to that church August, September, October, November. December, I pop back in for one service. And it's like that break of not being under the indoctrination every week of like, I mean, you get the habit. And then even when you're hearing stuff in your heart, that's like something's off here. You're there's some, it's like, well, I'm connected. I've already made friends. This is already what I do on Sunday. And you can kind of ignore your conscience and the Holy Spirit being like, hey, why do you keep noticing these things that are not of God that you would never support? in your own ministry. Why are you under someone that's doing this? And um, then she's talk, she gives a lot of messages. Anyone that goes to her church, uh, you'll be able to notice this stuff, how she talks about how that is her domain, her dominion, her authority. Nobody should pray and prophesy there or cast out demons unless she's given them authority. And it's all about, she's the one that does it there. It's her domain, her kingdom. And you go and do it in your own domain, which is not her church. Well, when I'm reading the New Testament, it's talk, Paul's giving advice about only two or three should prophesy at most in a service. Let there be order. Uh, that's telling me other people are prophesying. Other people are praying. The church is interactive. The members of the church are able to be moved by the Spirit and do stuff in an orderly way. But at Catherine's church, uh, cult, uh you're not allowed to do that. It's all about her ministry. I mean, even when she's having people talk, she holds the microphone the whole time. And I just started to sense control that there's no freedom. It's all about she needs to control everything because what if they start to expose her? She could pull the mic away real quick. You know, why don't she let them hold the mic? Why can nobody else pray and prophesy? Why can the Holy Spirit not move on anybody else when the Spirit of God's free to do that in the early church? So... It just became the Catherine Crick show. Even when she baptized me, there was no spiritual connection. It felt so transactional, like ba-bang, ba-boom, ba-bam. And I didn't notice it that day because I just had a pure heart. And I'm like, God, I'm just here for you. I mean, I remember standing there watching other people get baptized, just happy to watch them. And um, one thing that's interesting is... When I went to that church the first few times, I felt the Spirit of God tell me there's some men in her ministry team that just being around the church, I'm like, those guys seem cool. I want godly friends, people that love God. And I remember very clearly from the first time I went there, hearing God say, hearing the Holy Spirit in my heart just say, I don't want you connected with those guys. I don't want you to be friends with them. And it kind of upset me because I'm like, God, I want to be friends with them. But I just heard him say, nope, sit across. He got even pointed out, you can go sit over there. And this is before I understood I shouldn't even go here. But God's patient. He's gracious. He he knows what he wants to develop in each person. And he knows how to protect. Uh, so God told me where to sit. And I sat exactly where he told me to every Sunday. Usually in the same spot. Sometimes it would move a little bit. Um, there's a few times those guys would sit right in the area that I would sit in, and I genuinely felt the Holy Spirit be like, go sit somewhere else. I don't want you connected with them. And God saw something that I wasn't seeing yet, right? That maybe if I was connected with these guys, I wouldn't see clearly. Or if I did see, maybe I would be like, oh, but I'm already part of the church, and maybe it's okay, and I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings, and we all love God, and... But I just felt like God, looking back, I can clearly be like God being like, I don't want you around her leadership team at all because I'm not, I'm protecting you. I'm keeping you from this. I'm doing something for real in your life. And um, so I didn't get involved with him. Two specific guys. There's a handful of guys. Some of the people there are like genuine loving people that their eyes just haven't been open to the truth yet. That there's some wacky tobacco going on at 5F Church. There's some garbage coming out of Catherine Crick that is doctrines of demons. Um, and it took me a long time to, to get to that because I liked her personality. I liked listening to her talk. I liked worshiping with her worship team, um, which she was on. And But liking someone's not a good enough reason. Enjoying their personality or their charisma... Um, is no reason to ignore when the Holy Spirit clearly opens your eyes and is like, this is against my word. I don't teach people to sow for deliverance. 
I give freely. I set, I am the chain breaker. I set people free. You know, so first of all, if anybody, any ministry is telling you so for freedom, run, run and keep your money and take it with you. And if anyone's like, don't make exposed videos. Well, if the Holy Spirit showed you they're wrong, the New Testament tells us, hey, let people know <laughs> there are wolves. Get away from the wolves. You know, we don't got time for that garbage. We don't got time to give people grace preaching a false Jesus. And I have no desire to, you know, in making videos and releasing stuff that I hope brings people more truth, more clarity, closer to God, um, just in revealing my own story and what God's done in my life. I have no desire to make exposed videos. You know, I don't even want to expose my full testimony, but I know that's something God's going to have me do because it'll bring freedom to other people that are bound by the same stuff I was bound by, you know? So I'm going to make those videos. I don't want to. I just want to be a musician. I just want to be a worshiper. I want it to be easy. I want it to be light. I don't want to get into the nitty gritty, but I've got to because there's people in chains that need freedom. So I can't just make worship songs and put them online. There's other stuff God's like, hey, I walked you through that for a reason. So I believe Catherine Crick's led by greed. Um, I've seen her twist scripture at nearly every service that I went to. And cons considering how that happens continually, I've got to believe that she's okay with twisting God's word and using it for her own benefit. And I can't trust somebody like that. And you know, if you do it and you err, and then you come out and you're like, yo, I was so wrong about that. God opened my eyes and a couple of people online let me know. And I listened to them. And I just got to say, as a fellow brother in Christ, you know, I'm wrong. It, there's something in that, but she's never said there's a video where she's exposed about her meeting with Jor Davy that she's like, I was in the wrong. But with her sermon stuff, she never is like, you know what? God told me that John the Baptist wasn't really jealous. She Or other stuff that she used. God revealed to me you don't really sow for freedom. If she would come out and correct it, I believe the grace of God would come upon her and her ministry. If she would stop preaching so financially for God's protection. Look, if you broke, God going to protect you. It's okay. You know, if you have if you come into money and then you can be generous, okay. Be generous, but don't do it under compulsion and don't be trying to pay for God's protection. That's not how God works. So, I just want to warn people, especially people that I loved that saw me in her church worshiping wildly worshiping the living God, because I believe he deserves a wild praise sometimes. I believe that if you're in a dark place and the church isn't perfect, that you can still worship God wildly. I can still bring him praise. You know, back in my darker days, um, I praised God in some really dark places, and he received it and talked about him and witnessed about him during dark, drug-addicted seasons of my life. But the but the hunger for him was still coming out of me, even while I was still in bondage. So she doesn't correct herself. And as I watch her sermons, it's not talking about the blood and the power of Jesus. It's like everything is to draw you back to her, to come to my ministry. I'm the one with the anointing. Jesus is the anointed one. And if you never meet a true believer in Christ, Jesus Christ will set you free. Let that be known to you. Jesus Christ himself will say, you don't need Catherine Crick. You don't need Matt Brown. That's my name. You don't need me. Now, if the spirit of God's moving and I'm at a church speaking and I, glory to God, God will move. But you don't need me. Jesus has all the power. He's accomplished everything on the cross. So do not be deceived by doctrines of demons. Don't let anyone take you away from the simplicity and purity of devotion to Jesus Christ. We don't need all these strange doctrines. The mystery of Christ has already been revealed. Paul revealed it to us in the New Testament. What mystery is there to be revealed? Now, we can have prophecies. We can have people prophesy about events that are going to happen in the country politically. I believe in the prophets. I follow them. I'm blessed by them. 
but not all are real prophets. Now, let's say focus on Catherine Crick. A lot of thought-stopping devices, a lot of control, a lot of separation from the people in the church. If you're not part of her team, you don't talk to her. She's not available, even if you wanted to. If you're not willing to go up on stage where she's controlling the whole thing, she ain't going to pray for you. Not in, the, not in the six months of last year that I went there or the few months of 2022. And I wish that I could say that I went to her church in 2023 and she had corrected the false antichrist doctrine coming out of her mouth, doctrines of demons, but she didn't correct it. She was preaching the same garbage on Mission Street that she was preaching out at Revival in the park. Catherine Crick, you are wrong and you know it. You are using people and you are deceiving them for sordid grain. I got in the Holy Spirit and I could see greed dripping out of her smile. It's almost like greed and sordid gain has a, it's almost like a joker smile. There's a look these people have. I'm not here for myself. This is for anyone being deceived. Stop going to her church. Stop going there if you really love Jesus. Maybe the worship's good. Maybe you do get the charisma. Maybe the feelings are nice. But is the real Jesus Christ being preached? Are people actually freed? What I saw was false signs and wonders. I could have an experience. You know, even I as a believer in God with the Holy Spirit could be in an environment with all these thought-stopping devices and be deceived and think, oh, Maybe I'm supposed to be having some reaction to what she's saying and not even, you know, have a demonic presence. No, de no demons are in me. I'm not possessed by a demon. But when someone's telling you, you may feel this and that might be a demon moving, it's this brainwashing to get you to react a certain way. So did people have reactions? Yes, People had reactions, but I did not see anybody actually. Let's focus specific. I feel like deliverance can be a little bit hard to pinpoint if someone really got delivered or not. Um, but healing, physical healing, on the other hand, is not that hard to pinpoint. If your back is busted and you got healed, your back is no longer busted. If you were autistic and you got healed, you're no longer autistic. If you only had four fingers, and you got healed, oh, you got five, you know, so deliverance can, did you have a demon, was it a stronghold, sometimes these things are tricky, sometimes these things aren't that clear, but physical healing is very clear, you were sick and now you're healed, I didn't see the evidence of that, and people may testify that, they may, you know, a lot of people, she encouraged you to testify at every service. She's like, she mentions the verse, I believe in Revelations that talks about, and they overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. So people would go testify and um, make videos at her church right after. And, but there's such a push on that, that it's like, we're, do you really feel healed and delivered or did you feel pushed? without even having time to go home and digest this, to go make it on your own time. Another tricky thing I find about her is that she's always supporting her name, her church, her ministry, and is in, like one, one of the big ways that she's like, this is the way we can spread the gospel. This is the way we can spread news. Which if you if you go to her church, you can think, oh yeah, all the sermons do kind of seem to be about her, her anointing. Where's the sermons about live a pure life, go for Jesus. It, it seems, you know, actually I'm watching her to start to incorporate more of that, um, but I've lost hope that she's doing it being corrected. I think that she's just continuing on in deception and trying to be slick, you know? And I, I would love if every false minister that gets exposed comes under conviction and changes, but I don't see true repentance in her. Um, I don't think it's gonna happen. And I think even if it does, when these, these ministers have a exposure or fall, there needs to be evidence of change. You know, they need to 
humble themselves and be honest. So, but one of the things I noticed is she would talk about, you know, if you keep coming to this church and then you're under a protection, and she would mention the first chapter in Psalms that talks about if you study the word, you're going to be blessed, you know, if you do according to what it says. But she would twist the scripture and say, if you're planted in her church. It's like, well, I can read Psalm 1. It doesn't say that. So uh, the dangerous thing is that the people that are most susceptible to staying in a church like that and then developing a real belief in the demonic doctrines that she's teaching are people that don't have a strong foundation in the word. Because if you're reading the scripture, especially the New Testament, you know, I've read the Bible a few times straight through. And um, and then a lot of times sporadically. And as a believer, I'm just convinced we should really just read the New Testament a few times and get a grasp on what that says, <laughs> you know, and then go read all the other stuff too. It's all great and important and there for various reasons. Um, but man, to have a real understanding of what we have in Jesus, I think we should read the New Testament and um, really get an understanding and take heed. And if there's all these exposure videos about somebody, you know, one of the things Catherine would say is like people, some people do it out of jealousy and blah, blah, blah. I haven't seen jealousy in any of the videos I've seen exposing her. I've seen nobody that's jealous of her or her works. Um, I just see people not really getting healed and delivered and giving money for deliverance and desperate people, people with sick kids and a woman taking advantage of them. So... I still, to this day, have aspects about her personality that I like, but she's preaching against the truth of Jesus Christ, against the freedom of freedom, the freeness of freedom, and um, she's twisting sowing and reaping to mean stuff that it does not mean. She's preying on vulnerable people, and to all my brothers and sisters that go to 5F Church, come out of her and be separate. You know, I... I saw such beautiful hearts there. And some of you that I still see go when I watch the Sunday services from time to time, you have such precious hearts. I've seen you worship. I've talked with you. I've prayed with you. Such genuine love some of these people have, but they're under the veil of deception and getting indoctrinated with stuff that is not the gospel of Jesus Christ. So come out of her and be separate. I would encourage, you know, I'll see what the Lord shows me. I would encourage some of you all to get together and go to the park and have your own meetings. You know, and maybe God will lead me to go to the park in LA and have meetings. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know that I want to do that, but I want those genuine worshipers to be able to genuinely worship God and be preached you know, I would rather someone not give their opinion at all and just read the Bible. Even Paul, when he's telling Timothy, talking about, uh, I believe it's in 2 Timothy, where he's like, you know, don't be intimidated, don't be insecure, be strong and courageous. Um, and he's giving teaching about how Timothy needs to operate in the church. Paul tells Timothy, Teach the scripture. Make sure there's public reading of the scriptures until I come. Exhort the people. Timothy was younger, right? He younger in his in his work in the ministry under Paul, and um, maybe he hadn't developed sermons a lot. I don't know. I don't know that scripture really says all that, but I know that Paul was telling him in Second Timothy. Just read the scripture. Exhort the people. Admonish them. Don't put up with a bunch of wild stuff happening. Stick to sound doctrine. I would much more prefer someone that doesn't really know everything to say about the Bible just be like, hey, let's worship God with songs that glorify him. And then be honest and just be like, I don't know everything about the Bible, but let's open it and let's just read it. Let's just, let's spend an hour just reading part of the Bible, accept what it says, and then leave. And then keep all of our crazy opinions to ourselves and our doctrines of demons. 
So I hope I've expressed the gist of what I want to get out there to you guys. I hope that uh, the Spirit of God moves on people's hearts and protects people from supporting the false work that she's doing, even though it's cleverly guised in a seductive and deceptive way. It is guised. It is failed. And um, she is an heir. Catherine Crick, you are in deep error. That's it.